Year two under Al Golden, how has that relationship improved? Yeah, I mean, just getting more comfortable in the defense, um, being comfortable around him as a person, right? Uh, being comfortable around the guys and, and understanding and trusting that they know what to do, it's a big deal. Um, so we're excited to be in year two and kind of improve what we had last year. What have you noticed out of some of the younger guys so far? I mean, first off, the younger guys have been getting a ton of reps. Um, that's been something that has kind of changed and, and uh, certainly that they're very fortunate for. And so just kind of see their confidence grow. You know, uh, like the three freshman linebackers got here in January, they went through spring ball, and already you can see them playing faster right now in fall camp. Um, and that's certainly like really exciting to see. Because you, JD, and Marist are kind of more experienced, does that allow the younger guys to get more reps, or is that something that na happens naturally in fall camp? No, I, I think that's certainly the case. Um, I know from my experience as a freshman, I barely got any reps in fall camp. Uh, I would be lucky if I got two, three reps at all during the course of practice. Um, and yet these guys are getting reps in every single period. Um, and I think that goes to the fact that, you know, Marish, JD, and I can take a mental rep and get the whole rep out of it, right? And for them, it's very important to actually feel it, see it, see the speed, um, the physicality of the play, and also you know, go through the checklist pre-snap. Um, and so I think, you know, certainly having older guys allows you to get the younger guys reps and make sure you take care of the older guys physically. You had a chance to talk to uh, Max, your grad, our grad assistant. What has he brought to the program? Uh, he's brought... He, he's brought a unique uh, energy to the meeting room every day. Uh, he certainly knows his stuff. Um, in fact, like Coach Vrabel for the Titans brought him up in a, in a podcast, like singled him out as being one of the smartest players he's ever coached. And fortunately, like we get that every single day in the meeting room, little tips and advice and, and uh, what to look at, you know, what keys. Um, it's really, it's an important aspect that, you know, could be overlooked and, and we're certainly grateful for it. Jack, we see the physical transformation that you have over the summer, but how have you grown mentally and how are you approaching this season for us? Yeah, um, fortunately, like, I got my master's during last year's, uh, and so now I'm a non-degree-seeking non -degree grad student. I'm able to, you know, mentally and physically devote 100% of my effort into, you know, where I'm at and where I'm going to be at on the field. Um, and so that's really changed a lot. Physi physically, I've been able to focus on nutrition you know, put on really good weight, get my body where it needs to be, right? Mentally, it's dive in the playbook more. It's, you know, look at future opponents for the season, you know, just pick up little tendencies. That way, you know, the week of the game, I already have a head start to it. Um, and so it's just all stuff that, you know, it's going to take my game to the next level. Royal Center, Indiana, what's tougher, detasseling corn in this weather or fall camp? Uh, fortunately, I never had to detassel corn, but uh, bailing hay was, was the, probably the worst. Um, but yeah, it's it, it might be close. I don't know. You, JD, and Maris have been here for a long time together. What's your relationship like with them both on and off the field? Um, it's unique. Uh, anytime you have three fifth-year linebackers that can play with each other, it, it is special. Um, I think like the big thing is when we're on the field, we're normally on the same page, and if we're not, when we go to the sideline, it takes us two seconds to figure it out and move on. Um, and the big thing is like no repeat mistakes. Um, and so that's a bit, that's a really big deal. And then off the field, you know, JD and I have been roommates for the last couple of years. And, you know, uh, Maris has been around us and just always been with us. Um, we do pretty much everything like together, and, and it just helps like build that trust in one another. That you know, <laughs> on and off the field, like you're going to do the right thing. Coach Golden told us to ask the players what the identity of the defense is. So through three practices of fall camp, what's the identity so far? I think being led by a veteran defense, we're going to be a defense that is hard-hitting, physical, wreaking havoc, but at the same time, going to bring consistency and an execution that hasn't uh, been seen in a while. And Neil, uh, you mentioned that rep distribution changed a little bit. With that, is there an added emphasis on taking advantage of those mental reps when you're not always in there? Most certainly. Um, I mean, it's taking very advantage of every rep. So if my reps are going to get cut down on the field, that means when I'm out there, I need to be perfect, right? Especially, I mean, we're all still competing for, you know, reps during a game, right? Everybody wants to be out there in, on snap one, and everybody wants to be out there in the two-minute drill. Um, and so that means when you're out there on the field, you've got to be perfect. You can't make mistakes. Um, you've got to make plays. And then that also means when you're not out there on, in practice, like, 
you have to be capitalizing on that mental game, that mental uh, rep, and make sure that, hey, if someone made a mistake, I'm not going to make that same one. Is the decision to get Ragnar right guys more reps, is that uh, between you guys the regular players, or is that from the coaches? No, that's the coaches. Trust me, if I could get every rep, I would. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Max, why Notre Dame to come to your grad assistant? Uh, so, I, I, a lot of people don't know, I grew up a Notre Dame fan. Michigan State and Notre Dame. My dad, I have a bunch of family that went to Michigan State, but my mom went to Notre Dame. My grandfather played here, has been a donor here for a while. My uncle played here. So Notre Dame's been a part of my history my whole, my whole life. Like I grew up going to Michigan State games once a year and Notre Dame game once a year. So this place has been something special to me for a long time. When Coach Freeman gave me the call, it was, it was a no-brainer for me. It was a no-brainer. So what was the moment like for you uh, whenever you got to take the field for your first practice as a Notre Dame coach? Uh, to be honest, a lot of it is trying to make sure I know the defense well enough to keep up with these guys. That's what I was thinking about the most, was making sure I was going through it in my head, because it's a smart group. It's a smart group, and I wanted to make sure I was on my P's and Q's. But, I mean, like you said, this is a place like no other. It's special, and you feel it when you come here, and you know, I'm certainly feeling that, too. How many younger perspective? Are you coaching Al Golden, or is Al Golden coaching you? Oh, he's certainly he's coaching me. I've learned a lot from Coach AG, and I'm, you know, I'm excited to keep working with him. What have been the biggest things that you've learned? Uh, I know camp is, is still kind of early, but what have you learned from them so far? It's little things here and there that you don't think about. You know, it's little techniques. It's little putting words to different things. And like some things you don't think about, like here's a stick step, whereas when you play, you're just like, that's just where I go. And you, sometimes you think of that, and when you're coaching it, it's easier when you have those little teaching points and putting words to things, because then you can relate back to it, and you can ask them, and they'll spit it back at you. So I've really learned that from them is, is really tightening our vocabulary, tightening what we're doing, our techniques, how we're moving so that we can have them spit it back to us and they know what we expect. So let's go to the flip side. What have you been able to teach some of the guys in the, in the position? You know, I think more than anything, these guys know our defense better. I mean, they've been playing it forever. I know it's been different coordinators and linebacker coaches, but they, it's been pretty similar over time. So they know it about as good as you're going to know it, our older guys. The younger guys, I feel like I've helped them kind of catch up to the older guys a little bit. But the main thing I try to help the older guys with is just football one-on-one -on -one stuff in terms of what are we expecting out of this formation? What does this situation in the game present? What are they going to do? Is this team different than the last team? Is the tight end deep? Is he tight? Whatever it is, little things that we can use. Yeah, we know the defense, but let's take the next step and start playing the plays that we're seeing. What about the, the fact of, I mean, kind of a fresh perspective. A lot of these coaches have been around the players for a while but you're new, kind of watching them on the field for a first time maybe. Uh, what have you noticed about this linebacker group early through preseason from a fresher perspective? They work, and they work, and they work. And it's unlike anywhere I've ever been. I mean, we, you have to pull them back. Whereas anywhere else playing, you have to push everyone to go. You gotta push, you gotta push, you gotta pull. These guys, you gotta pull them back, right? They work, and they work, and they work, both on the field and in the classroom. One of the funniest stories about this place not funny stories, but what I think is, you, is interesting is you got to be careful what you say to them. Like, you got to make sure you're on your P's and Q's because they're going to do it. So, like, you better be saying it the right way, wording it the right way, because what you say, you're going to get it. You mentioned the older guys and the younger guys. What sticks out to you about the dynamic between those two groups? I think our older guys have done a great job of, of helping and bringing them along. You know, we, we hold each other accountable more than anywhere I've ever been in terms of group text and, hey, make sure 615, we're up. Nobody be late or we're breaking it down, you guys just saw it five minutes ago, it's, hey, make sure you're in your playbook studying for install, whatever, install four, get ahead on it even though it's two days away. It's just the habits, what it takes to be a Notre Dame football player. I think they're doing a great job explaining to them. And they have expectations for them. They put a lot of work into this program those older guys have. So they expect those guys behind them to do the same for this year and then when they leave next year. You've been around a lot of programs between college and the NFL. What stands out the most about Notre Dame? It's the kids. It's the players. It's the kids. It's what I talked about earlier. Not to answer the same question twice, but like it, it's the quality of the people, both the staff and the players. I mean, it's it's the difference between we gotta go to all right. That's enough. Like pull it back a little bit. We gotta we gotta hamper this down a little bit. To me, that's the biggest difference. I know I already said that, but that's what blaring right away. Mike Vrabel called you one of the best football minds he's ever coached. Were you always destined for coaching? Uh. Everyone always said I was good. I should coach when I was done playing. At the time, I thought, you know, I thought I could do anything I wanted. So I said, I'm going to prove to you I could do something outside of football. But I tried that for about six months. 
no, nothing really, and then I, I was back in coaching high school. And then what's the next step for Drake, Jaden, and Preston as they kind of grow? Day three of camp today, right? They're getting a lot of reps right now, a lot of reps. We have the, the little basics period at the end that they get a lot of reps too, but they get it all throughout practice. So right now they got to put their head down. They got to get reps. They got to do it over and over and over again. And really what I'm talking about right now is we just got to stack one good day after another. Stack one good day after another and don't think about the light at the end of the tunnel. Just think about putting one brick on top of the next. And that's all they should be focused on right now. I don't want to think about anything else. What was your family's reaction when they found out you were coming to Notre Dame? My grandpa, my, my grandpa Morris, Jim Morris, is extremely happy. Extremely happy because he was waiting for years for one of me or my brothers or sister to go to Notre Dame. We all went somewhere else, obviously, years ago. But no one was happier than my grandpa Morris. And I was very excited to give that to him while he's still here. Anything else for Max? Are there any particular goals you have for the upcoming season for your guys or for yourself? Yeah, I got two goals. I want to maximize our potential in our linebacker room in every way possible. And I want those guys, and this is maybe a selfish one, I want the, those guys that are leaving to feel like that they got something out of this last year, that we helped them become better football players and prepared them for the next step in, in some way. Those are my two goals for this year. Awesome. Thank you, Your grandfather ever talk about uh, being the announcer at Notre Dame? We talked about it. Oh, yeah. He's my grandfather. If you know his story, he's had a lot of different jobs from truck driving to radio to real estate, but he definitely talked about it. Yep, all the time. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Thank nice you. to meet you. You too. Okay, David, good to see you. Talk about uh, your evolution as a leader and how does that look like this year going into the game? I think one of the biggest things for me is having so many younger guys in our system. It's been an opportunity to teach and teach the sophomores who ultimately are going to turn around and teach the freshmen. And so whether it's answering every single question they have or looking at the details and their technique, it's been a really cool opportunity just to kind of almost test my knowledge by getting all these kind of questions from them. I've seen you walk over with Drake Bowen. What can you tell us about his game and what have you seen early on in the camp for yeah. Drake? He's been doing really well. He's playing fast. And I think all those guys are really picking up the defense really fast. And they're just eager to learn, which I think is one of the biggest things you can have as a young guy, just that eagerness to learn. And all three of us older linebackers had that when we were there, and so I think over time they're just going to continue to get better and better. Second year under Al Golden, is the, the message from him clearer this time around at fall camp? I think the message kind of always been the same thing, trying to maximize each day, trying to be our best. I think from our perspective, it's kind of easing to have uh, def being in the same defense a second year in a row, just you don't have as much of a learning curve, and so that's really helped us a lot. So let me rephrase it a little bit because I think you looked a little confused. Um, the, how's the relationship evolved with Al Golden uh, in his second year? Now? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things is that he's able to put more load on us as linebackers because he knows that we'll be a common voice for the defense. So when a motion comes in or a check needs to be made, we can make that check really fast and calm everyone else, calm the guys who have the their hand in the ground and can't see everything. And so I think being in that second year of defense, like he's really able to really put that load on us. We got a chance to talk to uh, Max, one of your grad assistants. What has he brought to the program early through camp so far? Yeah, he's been awesome. I mean, ton of energy. Obviously, it's my third GA. And so just another guy to learn from, another style of coaching. And honestly, he just brings energy every single day and is really good at hashing out the little details. And so. Film sessions might go a little longer, but we're really learning a lot and getting a great opportunity to learn under him. I know captains haven't been named yet, but there's a chance that you're a captain for a third time here at Notre Dame. What would that mean to you? I think it'd be a second time. Just second time? All right, sorry. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, it'd be an awesome opportunity just to help lead these guys, but I think being a captain has been a cool opportunity just because you get voted on by your teammates, and it kind of shows the respect that they have for you. And honestly, every single day, I'm just trying to maximize myself and push my teammates. J.D., I have to ask a question. This is a game that's been circled on the calendar by your family and friends, <laughs> but um, you know, 29 days away, how big of a game is this for the Bertrand family? It's exciting. I mean, it's a mix of two cultures. We have about 15 people coming from America, probably another 15, 20 people in Ireland that are coming to that game. And so my family's excited. Our family friends in Ireland are excited. And it'll be a really cool experience for both the guys here and everyone that's Irish. So you played there a long time, what, uh, 2016? Yes, sir. So you have a little experience, and it's like playing on that green, green branch. Yeah, super cool, and 
I think just the culture and they're expecting us as they said like 45 to 50,000 Americans and so the energy there is just going to be unreal and I'm just excited to be able to get out there and start the season. It's a different type of excitement, the Ireland game versus Ohio State last year, but is the kind of prep and the mindset as you go through fall camp, are they similar? Most definitely. The biggest thing for us is looking at the process. How can we maximize each day? And now that today's practice is over, we have so many hours until the next practice. How can we make sure that our teams better recover, our teams better prepare, our teams watching more film? Like, how can we make sure we're better than the teams we're going to play, no matter who that opponent is? One last question for JD. You, Marist, and Jack have all been here for a long time together. What's the relationship like between you three, both on and off the field? One of the coolest things is just having them as my best friends off the field, someone that you can talk to, not just about football, but about school, life, social, all those kind of things. And I think that really does come onto the field and that we're trying to beat each other to checking the defense or we're trying to make sure that each other knows every single little detail and anticipation of the offense. All right, thanks, JD. Coach, in terms of starters, probably the most experienced position group, uh, your linebackers, but how do you assess how some of the younger guys are coming along through camp? Yeah, I mean, we need them to challenge, and uh, so far, so good, you know. Um, uh, Zig and, and Snead made the most progress uh, in the spring, but I'm really pleased with the younger guys, too. Um, Osbury, Zinner, um, and uh, uh, who's my other guy? Uh, and uh, Drake. So, um, so far, so good. You know, they're all challenging. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a good start to camp. We keep mixing the rotations. Uh, we're going to need them all. We're going to need them all. What's it like balancing a multi-sport with Drake right now? Obviously, uh, baseball season's over. But. Yeah, no, it really hasn't been an issue at all. You know, um, again, we're, we're supporting his journey uh, there. And um, he had to make a lot of sacrifices in his personal life, in his social life, those types of things. Uh, it really hasn't impacted you know, his commitment to football. And, uh, you know, he's doing a great job in the playbook right now, and uh, we need him to make a little run here. We need those young guys to really make a run here and get good. Al, what are the characteristics that you're looking for early on in camp? Yeah, again, for us, you know, really just four things is where our focus is, right? So we, we need um, great ball disruption. Uh, we need to be, you know, finished. We need effort and attitude on every single play. We need to understand um, identify and execute in situations, uh, and then we need to be better tacklers. That, you know, that, that's our focus early on. There's some other things that we need to get done, uh, but those four is, is really where our focus is. And in your system, do you kind of stay within your system or do you kind of adapt it to the athleticism that you have? No, we adapt. Um, that's the beauty of it. You know, this is not a, the system is the star. This is not it. The players are the stars. And our job is to adapt to what they do, do well, you know, and um, whether that was Jalen playing a certain position in Navy and then playing a different position against uh, uh, South Carolina. Uh, I can go on and on, you know, whether we play base versus 11 or nickel versus 11. So, again, it's, uh, it's really a function of uh, who's doing what well. Um, we're not afraid to rush a bunch of different ends and linebackers on third down, so it doesn't have to just be you know, the starting four down. So we'll do, you know, whatever it takes. But the players are the star, and uh, as coaches, we, we adapt to it. Entering your second year as DC here, how do things change for you, or how do you enhance things from last year? Yeah, I mean, I just think everything has slowed down. I, I'm hearing that from the players and from the, from the staff. Um, our, focus, our focus is always inward. Like, we're always worried about ourselves. But for me, I had the ability and the, and the opportunity to have foresight and to be a little bit more outward thinking, you know, to be able to look at the schedule and say, you know, for these three teams, we're going to need this. Obviously, for Navy, we're going to need that. Um, when we play this team, hey, that's a little different. They're a little bit more 12 personnel, but we might need this. So I think from that standpoint, um, the offseason has been very, very productive, and uh, we're practicing accordingly. For your grad assistant that we're about to talk to, what has he brought to your awesome. program and in your position group? Awesome. He's smart. Um, he's tough. He's really tough. He's, he's mentally tough. He'll just grind. He'll work on it every day. Um, you know, and, he, and, and he's brought a lot of insight, you know, from Alabama, you know, and from the NFL. So he's got ideas, and uh, he's brought a lot of insight. And uh, he's been, he's been a, a welcome addition. He's been really good, and I know the players are, have adjusted uh, to him and really embraced him. Coach, how was your bond uh, strengthened with uh, the coaches?
side? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, again, we're we're very much a collective group. Um, you know, I give them the autonomy uh, to work. Uh, I'm not a micromanager. You know, I'm not following them around. I think from that standpoint, I try to empower them. Everybody has ideas. Um, and we'll manipulate things. We'll adjust things based on ideas. And um, I think, uh, you know, personally, uh, it's a blessing to have this group, not just the, the full-time coaches, but our graduate assistants and quality control guys are awesome. You know, uh, uh, you know Ronnie uh, Regula and Mike Moon and, and Ash and Seabass. I mean, they all, they all play a vital role in this thing, and uh, they, they make us better. So it's, it's a great group, and I'm really, I'm really proud to be a part of it. How good can this cornerback group be? And obviously, if they meet that expectation, can you do more up front with them being that, playing at that high level? Yeah, I think it's math, right? You know, if, if, if you're able to play more man um, or rush four uh, more, um, you know, uh, and get pressure, that's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is if, if you can lock down, now you can rush five. So um, we're trying to develop all of those things. Relative to your question, obviously, you know, they're, they're competing. Uh, we're trying to create more depth there um, just because of the number of packages that we have. And um, they really had a great summer uh, as a group and uh, just really excited about where this thing goes. We're early in camp, but it's exciting. How does the change of the strength and conditioning coach affect maybe the tackling and getting your the body physically ready at this point in fall camp? Yeah, again, uh, I love Matt uh, Bayless, and uh, I'm sad to see him go. Um, but the reality of in this business, it's you know, it's next man up, and we have to move on. It's it's really that simple. Um, and uh, I've been around long enough to see a bunch of these happen at different times of the year, um, and. Uh, you know, everything has got to be forward thinking. So um, the guys that are here, strength staff wise, we believe in. They'll do an awesome job getting them ready. And uh, in, that, in that sense, the torch has been passed. So uh, really, there should be no effect at all. Have you seen a difference in the way uh, Coach Freeman is approaching year two or when players are responding to him in year two? Uh, I, 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 you know, again, I, I don't want to speak for Coach Freeman. I, I think that's a question for Coach Freeman. What do I see? Um, is that he's comfortable in the role. You know, I've said it over and over again. Uh, there's one guy that's gonna lead us to the promised land, it's him, it's him. And um, he's got a clear vision, it's clearer now. Um, it's easier to execute. Um, we know exactly where we all stand with him. I think the players feel the same way. And um, um, he's got a great plan for preseason. Uh, he had a great plan for the spring. A plan for the summer. He's got an awesome plan for these guys in preseason, and I think they're respecting and responding to it. So, in terms of how he feels, you have to ask him. But uh, those are just my quick observations. And you talked a bit about the corners, but out of that safety group, have there been any particular standouts? How's that looking? Again, it's you know we got we got experience there. Um, all all three of the older guys are really doing a great job. Four four older guys now um, with the additions, but. They're all doing a great job of being vocal and really trying to be more demonstrative, and, and that's helping us. And then at the same time, there's a younger group that they're kind of mentoring, you know, which is awesome to see. And um, as coaches, we've been, we've been challenging each other to keep mixing up the, align, you know, the alignments, right? So the ones don't just go with the ones, but mix them up so they get comfortable for anything that may occur in a game or during the season. And, um, the safeties uh, are really doing a good job with their leadership. I, I see improvement uh, verbally, um, and uh, I think just overall, they're just they're very very comfortable. We got one more. Alec, uh, is there an identity with the defense, or is it still a work in progress? But, uh, can you give us as far as the I'll, I'll let I'll let the players answer that. You know, um, I really will. Um, I think there's certain things that the head coach. Um, there's standards here that the head coach has set. There's principles that we believe in on defense. Um, the identity, you know, there's an old Coach Parcell saying, right, what, what you say you are is your philosophy, you know, so I could sit up here and say we're this, that, and the other thing, but what you put on tape is your identity. And it's up to the players, and, and we're here as coaches to help them make that identity. Whatever their identity is that this team has, and every year it's different. You know, a team is reborn every year. 
this defensive identity uh, will be forged here uh, in the next three weeks. And uh, I'll let them answer that on the field. All right, we're not going to ask you to sing this year. Perfect. But year two under Al Golden, uh, how has that relationship kind of evolved into this fall camp? Um, we've gotten a lot closer. I mean, we understand what he expects of us, so uh, that allowed us to grow and uh, execute our assignment more uh, to the way he wants it throughout the defense. In terms of the starters, it's one of the more experienced groups, but then you have a lot of youth right under you guys. What role do you take in kind of getting the younger guys up to speed and getting them ready to, to get some reps on the field? Um, I challenge myself to be more vocal to them, uh, communicate more with them, whether it's giving them tips or just uh, helping them with the playbook yeah, or something, anything like that, on and off the field. And for you personally, what was your goal in, in getting yourself better in this offseason? Um, my goal was to be more comfortable in the defense, to be able to play faster. Harris, mm -hmm. I asked Coach Golden about the identity of his team, and he said that's a question you should ask the players. So is there an identity of this defense right now, especially at linebacker, or is this evolving through fall camp? Yeah, I think I, I would say it's evolving through fall camp. Every, every year we have a new team, really, so. Uh, I think we're building that throughout fall camp as we go. Uh, we're off to a great start. And what is your personal goals? Where would you like to see you improve heading into the season? Um, like I said, I'd like to play faster, be able to uh, to just read the offense better so that I can be in good positions to make plays. We just talked to Max, one of your grad assistants this year. What has he brought to the program and, and kind of his experiences through both college and the NFL? Uh, Max is. He's brought a lot of energy to the room. Uh, it's great to have him. Uh, we have early mornings. Uh, so he's just the same all the time. Um, he's a good for, uh, teacher to us. He really uh, knows the game well, so it's been good. In terms of the young guys, has there been anybody that has stood out to you the most so far? Um, I would say they're all like, they all stand out to me just because they're all talented young guys who are just very raw but still learning a lot, and they all make plays. So. And as far as out of the vets, you, JD, Jack, is there one particular, I guess, leader of the group? Is it a combination of leadership? How does that evolve? Mm -hmm. We try to be a combination of leaders. Um, JD is a, a great uh, leader on the defense. Uh, the whole defense knows that. He uh, communicates well with everyone, and he just sets an example in the way he lives his life, really. You guys are uh, replacing a couple of guys up front as well. How does that affect how you do it compared to this season, or does it? It uh, doesn't really affect us, I think. Uh, everything's going smooth with the front. Uh, we just communicate with them, and they know their stuff, so we just get things done. What are the expectations from your linebacker group, whether that's personally and from Freeman and Golden? Right. Um, I would say our expectations are to just continue to be the good leaders out there. Um, we're a big role in the defense, uh, so we get everyone lined up, uh, get the call, uh, community, communicate checks and all kinds of stuff. So. Just continue to be good leaders out there. There's so much excitement about Dublin. How are you kind of staying present through fall camp and just taking it day by day? Um, right, just taking it day by day, like you said. Um, just focusing on what I can do better um, from the previous practice and taking it, taking it one step at a time. You, JD, and Jack have been here for a long time together. What's your relationship like, both on and off? Uh, we have a strong relationship. Uh, like you said, we we came in together. Jack came in the spring earlier, but we still have a great relationship uh, on and off the field. We're, we have a lot of chemistry, um, and yeah, so it makes things easier for the, for us, for sure. One more from Eric. Someone asked Coach Golden about the identity of the team, and he said he was going to let you guys answer that question. What do you feel like the identity is of the defense? Um, I was just saying that I think we're like building that throughout camp, uh, and I think we're off to a great start. Thank you, Thank you.